All right, so we get recording started. So um, I'm guessing most of you are aware I'm Casey Raymond. I'm in chemistry. And um, the goal today in the 20 minutes is to show you how I use my iPad and uh, my MacBook Pro in the classroom to record my notes live into Panopto now. Um, I'll give you a heads up. Unfortunately, trying to do this directly to the ATC computers has a huge lag time between what's on the iPad screen and what appears projected. Um, I came across something this morning that I still need to test that might help that, but right now, um, I just carry my own MacBook Pro and do things that way. I'm gonna put in the chat a link to a document um, where I've written out kind of the steps and directions and components. Um, so you need a computer running Mac OS, you need an iPad, you need a cable to connect the iPad to the computer. Generally, that's gonna be a lightning cable, um, but however you would connect your iPad to the computer. And then you might instead, depending on how you wanna do these things, need an adapter so that you plug this into the iPad and you get both a USB connection and an HDMI connection. Oh. Okay. And in that case, you also might want a connector that does HDMI to USB. It's a, basically a converter that um, Bob Hagney tracked down um, for me a little over a year ago. And it's one of the ways we've made things work nicely in Panopto. And you'll need one or two HDMI cables. All right. So, Gonna hop over and actually share my screen now. I'm going to share the whole display. So these are the set of directions of the link I put in the chat. So folks have that. Um, I'll leave the chat the way it is. And I just this morning kind of took a couple photos to show you the setup that I was talking about. So if I'm just gonna record in QuickTime Player, basically locally on my computer, all I need is this cable for USB connection to the laptop. If I wanna record a video signal directly into Panopto, this is where I need the adapter, the USB cable is nice, but not essential. It just makes sure you, your battery and your iPad doesn't die. You plug your HDMI cable into that adapter. And then the other end of the HDMI cable, we have the converter to USB that I'll plug into the laptop. All right. I realize it's a whole bunch of things and steps, but um, this allows us to do multiple things. The first I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug my. Lisa, Lisa has a question. Oh, go, Lisa. Thanks, Casey. So just to make sure I'm following along so far, you could, in the image just above that, you could use QuickTime and just create an MP4, like do the same thing in an MP4 and load that up into Brightspace. Yes. Or you could, okay, thanks. Or, or, or into Panopto. Okay. And so I'll show that. And the, the benefit of doing it in Panopto is what? Like it saves it in Panopto for you to load into other classes? People, people are strongly discouraged from uploading videos because one video is larger than all the rest of your course, even if it's a five minute video. Yeah, so don't, don't load it into Brightspace. Don't, don't okay. upload a video in Brightspace. But if it's loaded into Panopto that's linked to your Brightspace account, that works. Now, the reason I shifted to Panopto um, was so that I was doing it live during class. I record my lecture, it goes straight into Panopto, it's linked to my Gen Chem Brightspace account. And when I quit it, it uploads to Panopto, it captions it pretty good. I don't go back and edit the captions. 
but it edits, puts the captions in, and it's available to students within a half hour or so from the end of class, and it's just there. That's why I shifted to doing things into Panopto instead okay, of- Okay, thanks. Yeah, if you do it locally in QuickTime, then you either have to load that to YouTube or into Panopto, but you should not load it directly into Brightspace. All right. Quick check, no other questions. Okay. So I'm just going to do my connection, and right now it doesn't like that, but that's okay. I'm going to, so I just connected my iPad directly to my computer. And I'm going to open QuickTime Player, which is just on every Mac. And when it opens, I'm going to select new movie recording. And it defaults to the FaceTime camera. And you click the little down arrow here, and instead select the iPad as your camera. And now I have my iPad projected. And so this, then I can open a notes application okay, and do my notes live. Um, and, and do whatever I want to, whatever's appearing on my iPad is in the QuickTime player. If I click this little red dot right here, it'll start recording it. And that's how I would make my recording. Okay. Um, but then you could do something else with. You can also select what microphone you are using. And so in lecture, I actually have a pair of AirPods and I just put one in an ear. It works well under the mask. And that's what I've used as my mic to record my lecture. Um, so this is how it would work directly in QuickTime Player. And to save it, you could do it as a quick help session or notes, share it out. All right. Does that make sense for everyone? So I'm going to open Panopto. And so I'm signed in to my Oswego Panopto. And if I do a new recording here, I don't have a video source. I can pick my FaceTime camera. I don't want that. But I can pick built-in display. And so it's going to record now everything on my built-in display. And I did this some in the past, um, especially when I was in Zoom and so forth, I'd have my FaceTime camera, so it was capturing, capturing me. And my secondary source was the built-in camera, or sorry, the built-in display. And so you can see how now my secondary source is my built-in display. And so this works. You can record into Panopto this way. You just have to be sure that you've got your whatever video source here and then the built-in display. And you can set, again, your audio to whatever your audio source is for your microphone. If you were doing slides, PowerPoints and such, there is the option here in Panopto. I just don't use PowerPoint slides, so I, I don't have much experience with that. Um, and as you know, just clarity in Panopto, you can pick where it's going, where this recording would get saved, how it would get uploaded, and away you go. All right. The addition of the adapter gives you one piece of flexibility. I'm going to, uh, and so I'm going to unplug my iPad 
I'm going to put in the adapter. I'm going to put in the HDMI to USB converter. And in this case, you have to have two HDMI cables. We have to have one that would go from the iPad to the computer. And you have to have one that then would go from the computer to the projector system. In the other system, I just have the one HDMI cable going from my computer into the HDMI port in the classroom. So what I've done now, so that everyone's in the room is kind of aware and in Zoom, I've connected the adapter to my iPad. I have an HDMI cable with the converter connected to the computer. And then I would plug an HDMI cable out of the computer to go somewhere else. Now, in QuickTime, it says iPad Pro. Well, it's not really that. I can go to the FaceTime camera, like I had before. I can also pick USB video. This USB video is from the converter. And so now it's converted from my iPad to the screen. Right. So it looks the same maybe as before. <clears throat> There's a small difference that happens on the iPad that I can show you. But when I come back to Panopto, I have USB video as an option in primary. And so I can select that. I'm going to get rid of my secondary to make life easier. And you can see the primary video now is going to be my notes, what's being projected from the iPad. And you also might have noticed that this window for QuickTime changed the aspect ratio. And it actually looks really goofy. I don't know why it does that. It doesn't do it all the time. I haven't figured out an order of operations. But what I have learned is if you just convert the video input, it returns to the correct aspect ratio. Um, and so then I, in this situation, I don't record in QuickTime Player. I'm just recording directly in Panopto. So I'd start my recording here in Panopto, hop to here. This is what's projected for students to see. And then I would write notes from there. And the folks in the room can probably attest to the fact that it doesn't look like there's a very big lag between what I've written on the iPad to, what, to when it appears up there. There's about a two or three second lag right now if you connect this to the APC computer in a classroom which is really difficult. <laughs> All right. And so in a, this is what's summarized in that um, Google document that I shared out. Um, I'm happy to meet with folks and walk through a little more detail if, you're, if you had a hiccup at some point in how to do this. Um, but uh, this is how it, operates, this is how it works. Questions? No, that's awesome, Casey. Thank you. That was actually clear. <laughs> it's it's not too bad. The the really I guess unfortunate part is the number of cables you have to carry around if you go through this level. But as I said you know, there is the ability to just, if you want to record just in QuickTime, um, to do things this way, um, where it's connected directly to the computer with no adapter, no video signal converter. And then this sometimes happens because the USB camera is gone. And so this is there. Now, one of the reasons I like the video converter 
is notice right here that it shows you all the tools in this app, the pen tool, the text tool, the eraser. So the students are seeing that this would be recorded by using the video converter. It tricks the iPad into thinking it's connected to a projector and those tools all disappear and it only captures the notes part of the screen in this app. And so where that also becomes a benefit is one of the other apps that I used to use is Notes Plus. I just don't use it anymore. Um, let's go. Just open it. So I guess I do have one other question. Yep. I, so I wouldn't, <clears throat> I wouldn't be using it for like, I, I don't do notes like this in class, like, cause we don't do equations, but I mean, I'm assuming I could do something really similar if I had on my iPad, if I pulled up like a PDF, right. And so like, I spend some time in class trying to show them like how to annotate documents or how to, um, do a close reading, like what, what it would look like, um, but I could do the same thing, right? So like if I had a, a PDF, I could just be writing on that and then recording, yep. um, you know, whatever I'm writing with the stylus, right? Yep, which I, on the screen now, I'm, okay. I'm doing. Do you have a pen with you or are you using the- I have an Apple Pencil. Okay. Yep. So I'm using an Apple pencil. Um, so where I was going to say when in the notes plus case, um, it had a feature where I could zoom in. And so I could write here, but it would appear, you know, somewhere else on the page or smaller, especially when And it allowed me then the zoom in feature allows you to get in and really adjust where you want. But the students are seeing this then. If I go through the adapter, the converter, let's be clear. Um, Interesting. It's stuck on something else. And I don't know what. This is one of the reasons I got away from Notes Plus. It started doing some really strange things. Yeah, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's. But in the other app, Notability, that I've been using, notice that toolbar is gone across the top when I put it through the video converter. That's one of the advantages is you basically are tricking the iPad into in the app into thinking it's really connected to a projection system, not just to the computer, all right? So there's pros and cons both ways. Um, the really key thing is in both situations, you're using QuickTime Player as the sort of interface to display what's happening on the iPad to the desktop of the MacBook that then can get projected out from there. I have one last question, Casey. Yep. When you, so your other HDMI that's going from your laptop, when you say that there's a lag to the ATC, are you selecting ATC? Like are, when you're in the classroom and you're plug in, you have it set to like the laptop so button? If, if, um, yes, yes okay. it will be connected to the laptop button. So um, just like you walked into any ATC with a, with a laptop computer, you would take an HDMI cable, 
from the laptop to the ATC. And that's what's projected. What I would like to do, and it this is what doesn't work, is to be able to just plug my iPad directly into the ATC, not have the extra laptop. And that's where the video converter came into play because you have to get a USB signal into the ATC. Unfortunately, on the Windows side, the software to serve the role of QuickTime Player has a huge lag between what happens on the iPad, how it gets interpreted, and then displayed on the PC computer. That's where the problem is, is through there. Are there some solutions to it on your personal device? Maybe. But we're at 20 minutes, so I got to go. <laughs> but happy to answer questions. I got to find the recording. Thank you. Thanks, Casey. There's that. That's a yes, right? Yes. <laughs>